Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is the 1988 horror classic Child's Play. Now, Child's Play is directed by Tom Holland, who also directed another one of my favorite horror films, Fright Night. Uh, the film is written by Don Mancini, John uh, Lafayette, I'm not sure if I'm saying his last name right, and Tom Holland, and the original story for the movie was written by Don Mancini. Now, Child's Play is, of course, considered to be a horror classic, and I have to agree with that. Uh, and, of course, the villain of the movie, Chucky, has become... He's really become kind of a horror movie icon now. Like, he's right up there with Freddy Krueger, Jason, Michael Myers. Like, I mean, pretty much everybody knows who Chucky is. And I actually have a pretty interesting history with Chucky. When I was a little kid, I used to be absolutely scared shitless of Chucky. Like, I mean, it was... It was ridiculous, like, I couldn't even look at a picture of Chucky, like, whenever I was in a video store, I would be, like, covering my eyes because I was afraid I was going to pass a copy of the movie or something in a video store, and when I was a little kid, my cousin actually had a Chucky doll, and I have very vivid memories of her chasing me around the house with it. You know, um... But uh, eventually, I, when I was 12, I finally got over that fear of Chucky, and I finally watched the and I finally watched the movie. My aunt had it on VHS, and when I watched it, I absolutely fell in love with it. And I and I started telling my family members about it because they all knew that I was scared shitless of Chucky. So when I told them I finally saw Child's Play, they were all like, "Oh Jesus Christ, you finally saw that movie?" You know. So, but. When I first saw it at the age of 12, it became, like, probably my favorite movie at the time, and, of course, Child's Play spawned a bunch of sequels, and I saw the sequels and fell in love with those two, but, of course, this review is on the first one. Now, originally, Child's Play was going to be a... Like, the original story for the movie, which was written by Don Mancini, it was originally going to be a satire on how the marketing for these toy companies affects children. And I will say, you do actually get kind of a hint of that in the movie, but whatever social commentary they're going for, it's very subtle. While in the original script, I heard it was much more in-your-face. And um, also, I heard Chucky had, like, almost a complete completely different origin in the original script than he does in this movie. But to be honest, I'm glad the movie um, turned out the way it did. Now, the film stars Brad Dourif, who I think most people would probably know as the guy who played Billy Bibbit in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and, uh, you know, the film also stars Chris Sarandon, who was also in Tom Holland's other film, Fright Night, and it stars Catherine Hicks, who, before this movie, was in Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, and I know she was in that show Seventh Heaven. Now, the plot of Child's Play is it's about a criminal named Charles Lee Ray, played by Brad Dourif, who, in the beginning of the movie, is being chased by a police detective named Mike Norris, played by Chris Sarandon. What happens is, uh, as Charles Lee Ray is being chased, he gets chased into a toy store, like he breaks into a toy store to hide from Detective Norris, but Norris chases him in there, and there's a shootout, and it ends up where Charles Lee Ray gets shot in the chest, and he starts bleeding to death, but the thing is, he's not ready to die, so he finds a doll in the toy store, and it turns out that this guy, Charles Lee Ray, actually practices black magic, and he puts his hand on the doll, and he says this chant calling out to a god called Dembola, and it actually transfers his soul inside the the body of this doll. So now Norris thinks that Charles Lee Ray is dead, but of course he still lives on inside this doll. 
So the movie then starts following a widow named Karen Barkley, played by Katherine Hicks, who lives with her six-year-old son, Andy, and right off the bat, you definitely feel something for this character, like, you realize that she has to take care of Andy pretty much all by herself, and she works at a department store, and her boss is like a real dick, and Katherine Hicks, who plays Karen Barkley, like, you definitely buy her as a single mother trying to support a child, um, but what happens is it turns out that Andy is a really big fan of this show called Good Guys, and they're making a line of dolls based on the show, and Andy really wants a Good Guy doll for his birthday, but they cost like a hundred bucks, so Karen can't afford it, but what happens is she finds out that a peddler outside of the department store where she works is actually selling one, so she buys it off the peddler, but what she doesn't realize is this peddler stole the doll from the toy store that you saw Charles Lee Ray get killed at in the beginning of the movie, and of course it's the same doll that Charles Lee Ray transferred his soul into. So, Karen, she ends up giving Andy this doll for his birthday, and it turns out the doll's name is Chucky, and what happens is Karen, she has to work that night, so she gets her friend Maggie to babysit Andy, and what happens is one thing leads to another, and Maggie ends up getting killed, and then Detective Norris, who is the person who killed Charles Lee Ray, shows up there, and... You know, and basically throughout the movie, you, you already realize that Chucky is alive, and throughout the movie, Chucky starts killing people, and Andy starts saying that Chucky is alive, and of course nobody believes him, I mean, he's only a six-year-old kid, and like, um... But, like, they start to think that maybe Andy may have something to do with these murders that are happening. And, uh, and I actually feel like some of the most effective parts of the movie, I mean, obviously right from the beginning you realize that Chucky is alive. But I feel like some of the most effective parts of the movie are the parts where the other characters besides Andy don't realize that Chucky is alive. And it's where... You know, Karen starts to suspect that maybe something might actually be wrong with her son, which has got to be a really horrifying thing to think about as a parent, and so, you know, I feel like those are actually really the most effective parts of the movie, are the parts where Karen might actually where Karen starts to think that her son might actually be crazy. But, of course, Karen eventually realizes that Chucky is alive, and what happens is it turns out that, like, Chucky, he finds out that uh, if he spends too much time inside the body of this doll, he'll, he'll be trapped in there forever, and he finds out that the only way he can become human again is if he transfers his soul into the first person that he revealed his true self to, and of course that person is Andy, so what happens is now Chucky is going after Andy so he can take possession of Andy's body, and now Karen has to stop him, and eventually Mike Norris finds out about Chucky as well, and he tries to help Karen stop Chucky, and that's the basic plotline of the movie. But, um, Child's Play is, as I said, a classic horror film, and sure, it's a silly premise, I mean, like, a serial killer inhabiting the body of a doll. It's a silly premise, yet the way it's made, it somehow this movie makes it believable, like... Sure, it's not a believable premise, it's not a realistic premise, but the characters in the movie are realistic, like, you can definitely believe these characters, and, yo, know, the film is actually really well acted, and actually a really well made movie, and, you know, it takes itself pretty seriously. I mean, there is some dark humor in the movie, but for the most part, it takes itself very seriously, which you could argue, um, it, you could make the argument that the movie's almost better than it has any right to be because, you know, of course it's a silly premise, and the fact that it takes itself so seriously, you could argue makes it funnier, but I would disagree with that. I like that the movie takes itself so seriously, 
I mean, despite how ridiculous the premise actually is, and, uh... Yo, and Chucky really is a great villain. Now, Chucky is, of course, voiced by Brad Dourif, who plays Charles Lee Ray, who is the person who becomes Chucky, and, yo, and Chucky is just, like, such an evil bastard. Like, I mean, because in the beginning, you realize that Chucky is pretty much manipulating Andy, because... In the beginning, like, Andy tells his mother that, you know, Chucky said that he was sent from heaven by Daddy to play with me, so you realize that Chucky knows about how Andy's father died, and Chucky basically uses that to manipulate Andy, saying that he's basically an angel from heaven, almost. Like, you know, so you really definitely hate the character of Chucky, like, you know, he really is just a scumbag, basically, and which kind of makes his come up bits by the end of the movie even more satisfying and like I said it's a great movie uh, very well made and very well acted and I mentioned how there is some dark humor in the movie and though in general it's a pretty serious movie when there is the humor like really dark humor it's actually pretty funny like there's a scene in the movie where Chucky is like in an elevator and you know and this old couple are in the elevator and the old woman's like oh look George some child left his left his doll here and the old man's like well leave it alone whoever left it there will come back looking for it and as leaving the elevator the old woman goes ugly doll and as they leave and the elevator goes up you just hear chucky go fuck you which i thought was absolutely hilarious but like i said if you haven't seen child's play definitely see it it's actually a really really good movie um so yeah that's my review on child's play and bye